The A-12 Avenger, affectionately known as the Flying Dorito, what an awe-inspiring vision for the future of naval aviation it represented. Imagine, if you will, the time is the late 1980s and the US Navy is looking to push the envelope in technology, capability, and performance. The A-12 was conceived not just as an aircraft, but as a herald of a new era, a leap forward into a tomorrow filled with innovation and daring possibilities. Let's take a look and build our concept A-12 Avenger to see how it stacks up against its program goals and how it could have altered the future of military aviation. By the late 1980s, the US Navy was looking for a replacement for its workhorse attack aircraft, the A-6 Intruder. A super versatile and durable platform, the Intruder served as an attack aircraft capable of carrying an incredible amount of ordnance along with variants which were electronic jamming aircraft and even airborne refueling tankers. Endearingly dubbed the Iron Tadpole by those who flew it, there seemed there wasn't any role the A-6 couldn't do. It even carried air-to-air -air missiles, although nobody would confuse it for a fighter. Some feel that the intruder represented a golden age in carrier aviation, flying alongside legendary aircraft like the F-4 Phantom and later the F-14 Tomcat, which we'll come back to. Getting back to the intruder, although it could perform a variety of roles extremely well, air defense systems were becoming more sophisticated and its 1960s design was beginning to show its age. The Navy wanted a more advanced attack aircraft that could penetrate integrated air defense systems while delivering more payload. Enter the A-12 Avenger. The A-12 was designed to be a Swiss army knife of the skies with its planned ability to carry a diverse range of munitions, including air-to-surface and air-to-air -air missiles, as well as precision-guided bombs, it was intended to be adaptable to a variety of mission profiles. Talk about a multi-tool for modern warfare. But how would this new attack aircraft successfully complete its missions? You guessed it, stealth. One of the crowning aspirations for the A-12 was to pioneer stealth technology for the US Navy's carrier-based fleet. This was going to be the aircraft that could penetrate deep into enemy territory undetected while delivering its payload with surgical precision. The idea was that adversaries wouldn't even know it hit them until it was too late. But the A-12's design goals weren't limited to stealth. Building on cutting-edge technologies of the time, the A-12 sought to incorporate futuristic avionics systems for navigation, target acquisition, and weapons delivery. Pilots would be equipped with an advanced cockpit brimming with state-of-the-art systems that would make flying this bird feel like stepping into the next century. Let's not forget that this was to be a Navy aircraft, and as such, it was fully capable of operating from aircraft carriers. With its innovative design, the A-12 aimed to maximize operational readiness and effectiveness, providing the Navy with next-generation sea-based strike capability. The vision was an agile, powerful asset that could be deployed anywhere in the world, right off of a carrier deck. Furthermore, the A-12 was not only intended to be stealthy and versatile, but it was also designed to have the legs for long-range missions. This would extend the Navy's reach, giving the United States unprecedented flexibility and strategic depth. The idea was to go farther, stay aloft longer, and strike harder, all while remaining invisible to enemy radar. And last but not least, the aircraft was envisioned as a platform that would be easier and cheaper to maintain than its predecessors. Streamlined maintenance protocols and procedures would keep it in the air more often and at lower operational cost, a win-win for military effectiveness and budgeting. All right, now let's get to the details behind our concept fighter. Picture a scenario where the contract didn't go to McDonnell Douglas and General Dynamics as it historically did. Instead, imagine a world where Northrop was the victor in securing that coveted contract. This, after all, was the era when Northrop was dazzling the globe with its B-2 spirit a marvel of flying wing stealth technology. It's not too far-fetched then to think that our hypothetical A-12 Avenger could benefit enormously from that advanced aerodynamic design, utilizing the expertise and innovation that made the B-2 a game changer. The first thing you likely notice about this concept A-12 is the single crew member. While this at first seems counterintuitive, we are taking clues from today's Joint Strike Fighter, better known as the F-35. The A-12 was intended to make use of what we now call sensor fusion. 
So given this, we decided that a single crew member would be sufficient. And remember, had the development gone on with the A-12, it would have overlapped the JSF's development timeline, meaning that the A-12 could have been operational in the early 2000s with similar tech that the F-35 has today. Getting back to the concept aircraft, since the A-12 had to operate on carriers, folding wings are mandatory to save space in the crowded flight deck and the hangar bays below. Next, we take a look at the engines. Aside from radar cross-section, or RCS, another component of stealth is minimizing your heat signature. Passive systems like infrared search and track, or IRST, can look for hotspots in the atmosphere to locate jets, especially ones that make use of stealth. In order to reduce its heat signature as much as possible, our A-12 has shrouded or ducted engine exhaust ports, similar to what the B-2 bomber makes use of. Next, let's turn our attention to the engine inlets, a seemingly minor but incredibly strategic feature. Imagine a river taking a winding serpentine path rather than a straight one. In much the same way, these inlets are positioned lower than the exhaust ports to create an S-shaped route for the airflow. The real genius behind this design is its ability to shield the engine's fan blades from visibility through the intakes. Given that turbine engine fan blades which usually align perpendicular to the aircraft's direction, can be a major source of radar reflections. This is no small feat. The innovative ductwork isn't unique to our conceptual A-12. It's also employed by modern jets like the Super Hornet to keep their engine blades under wraps. Now let's talk firepower. The A-12 adapts a hide-in-plain-sight strategy for its armaments. Concealed within its belly are three weapons bays. Picture the central bay as the heavy hitter. It can accommodate big ordnance like laser-guided bombs or anti-ship missiles. Meanwhile, the two side bays serve as the versatile utility players, capable of carrying lighter ordnance such as air-to-air -air missiles for defense or smaller bomb loads for tactical strikes. In our envisioned A-12 concept, stealth is of course a priority, but we've also endowed it with the capability to haul external fuel tanks. Think of it as a soldier wearing a hydration pack. It's all about extending endurance. This feature would be particularly beneficial for long-haul ferry flights or redeployment missions. Contemporary jets like the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Lightning also employ this strategy for similar reasons. While it is true that carrying external tanks or ordnance does compromise the aircraft's stealth profile, there are scenarios where the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Just like a chess player sacrificing a pawn for strategic advantage, sometimes the mission dictates making that trade-off. After delving into the A-12's key attributes, we find ourselves pondering the tantalizing question, what might have been? Let's imagine an alternate timeline where Northrop clinches the A-12 contract. Could that have also paved the way for the YF-23 to become more than just a prototype? It's worth remembering that during the Advanced Tactical Fighter, or ATF, competition, the Navy and the Air Force had the Lockheed YF-22 pitted against the Northrop YF-23. I've explored the factors behind the YF-22 selection in past videos on this channel. Yet, in this hypothetical scenario where the YF-23 wins, one can envision a carrier deck graced by both the Avenger and the Black Widow. The ripple effects of such an outcome would have been nothing short of fascinating. Recall that the A-12 aimed to take over the A-6 intruder's duties. What we saw in reality was the Super Hornet stepping in to fulfill not only the attack role of the A-6, but also the fighter role of the F-14 Tomcat. Let's consider another scenario. The YF-23 falls short in the ATF contest as it did, but the A-12 Avenger takes wing. Such a sequence of events could very well have thrown wide the gates for futuristic versions of the F-14 Tomcat to come to life. The crown jewel among these would likely have been the ST-21 or Super Tomcat 21st Century. With its composite materials, supersonic cruising capabilities, and potential for thrust vectoring, this upgraded Tomcat could have been a game changer, deepening the mystery of military aviation's great what-ifs. There's a video on this channel all about the SC-21, link below in the description. But alas, the A-12 Avenger found itself ensnared in a web of complications that ultimately led to its downfall. It really was a perfect storm, ballooning costs, technology requirements ahead of their time, 
shifting military priorities and waning political backing converged in a way that proved insurmountable. The program met its untimely end in 1991, cementing its place as one of the most tantalizing might-have-beens in the lore of military aviation. And now, a special announcement. It's hard to believe that this channel is on the cusp of reaching 100,000 subscribers. What an incredible ride this has been. When I first fired up my computer to create animations and tell stories of military aircraft, I never thought I'd find an audience as passionate about aviation and history as I am. For that, I'm truly grateful. Now let's talk about the next chapter in this journey. Everything you see on this channel, from the historical research to the 3D animations, is crafted by yours truly. And believe it or not, this is how I make my living. I'm standing at the crossroads of some extraordinary opportunities that will elevate the content we all love. However, to seize these moments, I need your help. If you find value in what I do, consider becoming a channel member or supporting me on Patreon. Your contributions will enable me to dedicate more resources to bring to life these stories you enjoy. So here's my heartfelt thank you. Thank you for your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, and if you're in a position to do so, your additional support. It means the world to me, and it fuels the future of this channel. Until our next adventure, clear skies and tailwinds to all of you. Thanks for being a part of this incredible journey. Now you know.